What is up you guys? Sean right here. As you can probably tell, I'm at the California Science Center. In fact, directly behind me is the Wright Brothers plane. The glider, I should say. This is the 1902 Wright Brothers glider. This is what gave man the power of flight right here. They tried so desperately for so many years. Finally, the Wright Brothers did it right. This is a replica, by the way. And I believe this is a replica as well. It's a 1928 monocoupe, has one engine, and has room for two. As you could probably guess, I'm recording this video after I checked out the King Tut exhibit here at the Science Center. If you haven't seen that video, check out the iCar annotation that just popped up on the screen, or check out the link down below in the description of this video. It will also be a link on the insulate that will show up at the very end of this video. The Sketch Foundation Gallery presents Air and Space. This is my dad's territory right here because we're looking at outer space. Radio, infrared, invisible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, and beyond. Woo! So that's what we can actually see right there, the visible light. It's a one-fifth scale of the Chandra Space Telescope. The Juno spacecraft mission to Jupiter. You can find more at nasa.gov slash Juno. And there's Hubble. Hubble Space Telescope. It's not the actual size, it's like a one-fifth scale. This is a one-fifth scale of the Spitzer Space Telescope. And these are meteorites. An iron meteorite, stony iron meteorite, stony meteorite, another stony meteorite. Another stone meteorite. Right? Like everything Here we have a mercury capsule, Redstone 2. This is the actual caps capsule. You want to see how tight they stuck the astronauts in here? Look at that. If you're claustrophobic, that would really give you a run for your money <laughs> because that would that would be so tight, literally. Oh, it was in it. Ham, right there. Here's a Gemini capsule. It's a little bigger, but still, if you're claustrophobic, that's probably not the right for you. <laughs> We've got satellites, there's Sputnik right up there, the first satellite, that was a Russian satellite. They've actually made this a lot bigger, this, this uh, viewing area. I guess people were walking up to it and doing stuff to it, but this is an actual Apollo capsule. Instead of one person, it's three. Three astronauts all stuck together. A little bit more room, but still, a <laughs> very tight squeeze. There's the Viking lander. This is an actual full-scale model. So that's what it really looks like on Mars. Of course, we sent other ro rovers to Mars, like Spirit and Opportunity and Sojourner and Curiosity. We were supposed to be sending another one up soon in 2020. Here we have actual astronaut uniforms. Mercury test training suit. There's the helmet. Very small. Gloves. The Apollo space astronauts. Kind of reminds you of the Apollo 13 helmet, doesn't it? The Apollo 13. I think this is actually from Apollo 11 or 13. 16. Mattingly has 21 layers and weighs 185 pounds on Earth. I'm not making that up, like I just actually read it right there. <laughs> Thomas K. Mattingly. And if you guys want to see an actual piece of moon rock or moon dust, there it is. From the moon, right there. From the Sea of Tranquility. The Apollo Exploration Award Act gave a lunar sample to each Apollo astronaut. This moon rock is on loan to the California Science Center from Apollo astronaut Buzz Aldrin, Dr. Buzz Aldrin. That is incredible. It says right there, this is a portion of the lunar sample returned by Apollo 11. That is incredible. Now you may notice there's a map here that shows the different landing zones for the different Apollo missions. You got Apollo 12, 14, 15, 17, 11, 16, but this one, 13, never made it. They had an issue. Houston, we have a problem. Mission aborted. It's 
probably one of my favorite exhibits here at the Science Center, World of Life, and it never changes. There's probably two or three exhibits here at the Science Center that never change. Ecosystems is a somewhat new area for the Science Center, but still, I mean, it's cool and all, but I still love World of Life. Here we go. Viruses, uh-oh. Model of human Oh, this is HIV. Yikes. T4 virus. Here's fungi, preserved fungi, and living fungi right there. Oh yes, Gertie. Food's long journey. This is where it gets fun. So it shows how long the digestive system really is. So watch this. There's the mouth. Up we go. We're now the foot with the esophagus, the stomach. Now comes the intestines. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now we're getting into the large intestine. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. That is insane. And now we're going to put her all back together. It's pretty amazing that we have 21 feet in our body just for the digestive tract. Look at that. That is nuts. Looks like one big long noodle. <laughs> we're almost there. And here comes the head and almost there. And there we go. Here's a gopher snake swallowing an egg. <clears throat> He's got a big mouth. Oh yeah, this guy. This shows an actual digestive tract. Look at this. Stage one. Ingestion. So that's eating. Stage two. Digestion. Oh, you should excuse yourself. Stage three, absorption. And last but not least, defecation. I think we all know what that is. Here we have lungs, the alveoli, the airways. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. I'm using this lever, by the way. A kidney. Uh, talk about the urinary tract right here. Here's a preserved human heart. It shows the different sections of the heart. The different valves, like the left atrium, the left ventricle, the right atrium, and the right ventricle, and the valve. Valve right there, number five. So there's a rat heart. That's a human heart. And there's a cow heart right there. Dog, mouse, and that big one up there. Yep, that big monstrosity. That is a that's an elephant heart. Look at all the blood that goes through that. Wow. 200 liters or 52.9 gallons. Wow. Little chicks. Little chicks. Cheap. Can you guess what animal is inside the egg? I'm gonna say dinosaur. It is a dinosaur! <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic Park. There's a model of DNA right there. Human opsin gene produces a protein necessary for normal eyesight. Well, I didn't get that gene because I don't have normal eyesight. My eyesight's terrible. <laughs> I don't have 20-20 vision, folks. My eyesight's terrible, like, right now I can't even see the viewfinder. That's how bad it is. If you guys want to tackle surgery, check out Surgery Theater. We're not going to go in there because I know some of you probably won't want to see that. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> see that right there? That's a Hinkle's Leaf-Tailed Gecko. Right there. See it? That's really good camouflage. And here we have a Cuban Green Anole and it's green, so I wonder what color it's gonna be. That's purple, no, I'm just kidding. 
This one's gonna be a lot more difficult because it's gonna be really good camouflage, as you can probably guess. Look at this. This horned frog blends in with dead leaves. Look at that. That's amazing. It might take me a minute to find it in here. I'm pretty sure it's in here somewhere. But there's a lot of green in here. There it is. <laughs> there's a fly in here, by the way. But there it is. It's right up there. <laughs> there's a fly in there, too. Oh, there's two flies in there. Ooh. There's a bee. Stink beetle. Monarch butterfly. We actually have a couple in our backyard right now. A zebra butterfly. A barter beetle. <laughs> yeah, grasshopper. That's actually a fatter grasshopper than what we have. Um, so we're on bumblebee. Oh, that's a bumblebee. Never mind. An owl butterfly because of the eyeballs. Buckeye butterfly. I click beetle. That is really pretty. Look, it's look like it's metallic. Look at that. Wow. That is really cool. Blue Morpho butterfly. Blue Morpho! <laughs> that is really a nice looking moth. Look at that. Luna moth in disguise. Check this out. So here we have a bee fly, longhorn beetle, and a yellow jacket. Which one do you think has the real stinger? It's the yellow jacket. These two guys? Yeah. Bee fly. It looks like a bee, but it's not really a bee. Look at this. American cockroach. There we have a blue darner, fork-tailed bush, and a cicada. That's a big bug, giant silk moth, marbled sawyer, black witch moth, dead leaf kitty did. Oh, that's a pretty one. Look at that one. Hooded mantis. Did I get the, that one right? Oh, there we go. And copycats. These are cool. Dead leaf mantis right here. Walking leaf from Malaysia. That is actually a really cool one. Then we have dead leaf butterfly, tree hopper, and then we get to the really creepy ones from like your nightmares, longhorn beetle. And I've actually had a walking stick on my arm one day. An especially exhibit uh, in one of our uh, neighborhoods. Giant walking stick, look at that. It wasn't, it was probably half this size, but still, having a walking stick on your hand can really freak you out. <laughs> Body armor, the black spiny double. Ironclad beetle. Stag beetle. Here we get to the really creepy ones. Atlas beetle, western unicorn, and then we have the elephant beetle, or the biggest beetle out there. Look at the size of that one, good lord. How would you like to be sleeping next to that thing? <laughs> Probably wouldn't want that thing in your bed with you. 